patients in hospital beds are over the age of 65. It puts an immense strain on the system. Many are treated well, but when it goes wrong, the consequences can be tragic. This is Michelle Baker and her husband Lee returning to Michelle's parents' house. It is the most emptiest feeling in the world to go in the house. The house has actually died. Even with eating on, it's cold. There's something missing. Michelle's mother is in hospital, having suffered from heart failure. Michelle's father, Fred, died 11 months ago after a catalogue of disasters occurred when he went into hospital. Cause of death, septicemia, chest infection, renal failure, fractured left tibia. Fred went into hospital for a simple hip operation. He died four weeks later on the morning of his 60th wedding anniversary to his wife Edna. This card was read to him on his deathbed. For my wonderful husband on our diamond wedding anniversary, with all my love for 60 happy years from Edna, love and six kisses. Letters of condolence sent to her mother still fill Michelle with emotion. It seems especially poignant today when you should have been celebrating your 60th anniversary together. Fred leaves us with many memories of a strong, hard-working man, and you must all be very proud of him. We send our deepest sympathy to you, Michelle, and the children, Pauline, Bob, and boys. So Dad always sat there in this seat, and these are his crossword dictionaries. At 86 years old, Fred was a fit and healthy, proud man. But when his bladder weakened in old age, it became a source of much personal embarrassment. My dad spent a lot of time in the chair, especially when he started to become incontinent. Some evenings, he would stop up all night long. He was too proud to wear nappies, too proud to have a catheter, didn't want to cause any fuss, but he didn't want to cause my mum extra work with the washing, the pegging out of the sheets. So he'd sit up all night, wouldn't he? It was an accident while climbing out of this chair that led to Fred's broken hip. The chair, he must have got up, leant onto it, and the chair toppled over and he fell. And being so old and frail, fractured his left tibia. Fred was admitted to Walsall Manor Hospital in Birmingham at 4 a.m. on the 8th of May. He underwent a hip replacement operation from which he seemed to recover well. They were very helpful on the ward. They showed the x-rays. He showed the ball with the spike that actually goes into the leg. And then the leg welds, if you like, around this spike. And everything was fine. And the operation was a total success. Six days after his operation, Fred was examined. He was not drinking enough and was prescribed a drip to rectify dehydration. Despite this, he was listed to be moved to the rehabilitation unit. But at this time, no beds were available and Fred's discharge was delayed. He remained in the orthopaedic ward at Walsall Manor Hospital. As the days ticked by, no drip was ever attached and Fred continued to dehydrate no record was kept on his fluid balance chart. Fred was then examined three times by both the orthopaedic registrar and senior house officer, but his dehydration was overlooked. My dad wasn't a complainer, or a moaner, or a whinger, or a wimp. And as the days went on, he probably felt ill. But I think he got to a point where he was probably too ill to speak up. I think there are instances where there simply isn't enough attention paid to making sure that the fluid and the food intake of patients, particularly perhaps older people, is monitored closely enough. In this case, it's probably due to oversight, poor attention to routine, basic elements of care. 
11 days after he was listed for transfer, a bed became available in the rehabilitation unit at Goscote Hospital and Fred was transferred. No examination was made to see if he was fit for the transfer. On his arrival at Goscote, the staff nurse realized his condition and dialed 999 to have him rushed back to Walsall Manor Hospital for emergency treatment. On Fred's arrival, he had a high temperature, low blood pressure, and was severely dehydrated. He was extremely ill. Even worse, he now had signs of bronchopneumonia and septicemia. The hospital called Michelle, and she rushed to his bedside. He had an oxygen mask on. His pyjamas were put back on, all odd. So he was like this, like a bag of rags. Shaking from head to foot. His feet were going like this. His eyes were actually in the back of his head. And he was going as if he was saying no. And I kissed him on his forehead. And it was burning completely. There was blood coming down the sides of his mouth, watered blood. Imagine how I must have felt. Despite the best attempts to deal with Fred's condition, the situation worsened. The words were, um, the kidneys were failing. At that time, I went completely hysterical. It's like it's just something that I never thought had happened. You never think you're going to lose your parents. For the next four days and nights, the family kept vigil at his bedside. Fred managed to hang on until his diamond wedding anniversary. My mum was his be-all and end-all with his life. And I do believe that my dad kept on this earth just to see that day. I personally didn't sit with my dad. My mum did, my husband, my children. But I just couldn't sit there. So I look at my dad as the man who sat in his chair, who was always happy to see you. Fred Thomas finally died early in the morning of his 60th wedding anniversary. All Michelle now has of her father are her memories and those few possessions left in his home. It was just too late. Too thin, too weak, too ill. I would think he was glad to pass away out of his misery. The chief executive of Walsall Manor Hospital turned down our request for an interview, but at the time he suggested that underfunding of the NHS was a critical factor. 10% up on emergency admissions compared to last year. We're acknowledged that we're underfunded. There's huge pressure on beds and regrettably a combination of these things together with inappropriate levels of care and attention lead to these sort of disasters and tragedies. Sadly, Fred's treatment in hospital was not unusual, according to a recent report by the Nursing Council. It said the care of older people is mainly deficient in fundamental aspects of nursing, failing far too often to meet the basic needs for food, fluid, rest and activity. Hello, Mike. Hello, beautiful. Hey, yeah, Donnie. Those gorgeous. There you go. Beautiful. I've got animals. My animals don't have water, or they don't get fed properly. I am prosecuted by the RSPCA, and I'm taken to court and dealt with. And my name would be mud. Complete muck. But for it to happen to humans, it's OK. The chief executive wrote to the family, apologising for the treatment Fred had received. He admitted to a system failure. Since Fred's death, Warsaw Manor Hospital have introduced modern matrons to their wards in an effort to stop incidents like this ever happening again. Modern matrons exemplify the leadership that 
is required in hospitals to say the buck stops here. Not in some remote office, not in Whitehall, but on the ward. And that's what people wanted, to know who was in charge. There is not one die, the Gower's boy. But I don't think of him and the way he must have felt. This hospital has got three stars. It's supposed to be good. You cannot blame just one person. If I personally worked on that ward, I would have resigned myself. One of the biggest problems